All right, so this is just like one of the ones I did before. Given the roots, write an equation of a polynomial in standard form now. So now I'm being more specific. I want it in standard form. Here's my roots. I didn't even bother with the degree right now, so I'm just going to keep it simple. If I wanted to write this in factored form, I would just write, write y equals x minus 7. I would just subtract the root because it's just an integer, and x minus 5. All right, great. That's factored form. So this factored form is really helpful for telling what the zeros are, or x intercepts, same difference, because uh, I could set each factor equal to zero. But sometimes I want it in standard form. So how would I multiply those together? So if you learn FOIL, not necessarily the worst thing in the world, but doesn't really help when you have three. Um, so what I use, what I've actually been taught to use, is these are these little boxes. All right. So how do these boxes, these boxes just organize your work. I'm trying to multiply x minus 7 and x minus 5. So what I'm really trying to do is multiply each term here times each term here. And that's exactly what this box does. I multiply, I take each term and I multiply it times each other term. You can see x times this one will give you here, x times this will give you this one. And vice versa, x times this will give you this, x times that will give you, so it all works out. And then I take everything inside the box, write it all out, that's my standard form. It's just really easy for you to organize your work, especially when we start having like trinomials or bigger polynomials inside here. So let's just do it. x times x, that's x squared. x times negative 7, that's negative 7x. x times negative 5, that's negative 5x. Negative 5 times negative 7, that's going to be what? 35, because a negative times a negative. All right, then all I do is I take everything outside the box. So y equals, my first term is x squared, so I start with the biggest, biggest term there, or biggest uh, degree. Um, and then I combine negative 7x and negative 5x, right? So that's going to combine to give me, what, negative 12x? And then the last one is plus 35. So sometimes, I mean, you could write all four of those out, and then, but you just know that these two are going to combine. These are like terms. That is my polynomial, right? Again, assuming that we already knew a was going to be 1, we didn't say anything about the degree, that's a polynomial that has roots at those. You can actually, you can see it. This is factored form of this. Totally works. Two numbers that multiply to give you positive 35, add to negative 12, that's those, right? Okay, so now that's the simple example. What happens if I say, okay, what about x equals plus or minus square root of 5, all right? So what are my factors there? What are my, what are my factors become? So that is the first step. Let's write it in factored form. My factored form would be x minus square root of 5, and then x plus square root of 5. So this is really, I subtracted the positive square root of 5, and then I subtracted the negative square root of 5. And when I subtracted the negative square root of 5, subtracting the negative would be just adding. So that's what that, would, that one is really the positive square root of 5 that I subtracted. So those are my two factors. I need to multiply them together, and I'm going to use that box again. Why am I using the box? Because it's easier. I think it's easier. I didn't learn it this way, but, uh, you know. It's better. When we use it, it's better. Okay, so we've got x minus square root of 5, x positive square root of 5. Okay, x times x is x squared. x times negative square root of 5 is negative x square root of 5. x times square root of 5 is x square root of 5. And then we've got negative square root of 5 times positive square root of 5. Well, that's just this. That's negative square root of 5 times square root of 5, all right? So that is really the same as saying negative square root of 5 times 5, right? Which is the same as saying negative square root of 25, which is the same as saying negative 5. So negative 5 is my answer, all right? So, oh, I'm sorry. Did I mess that up? Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Okay, so then my standard form is this and this are going to cancel negative x squared of 5 and positive x squared of 5. So that's going to be x squared plus, man, I am messing up. I'm second guessing myself, people. Minus 5. Minus 5. All right, so that is my, that is my standard form. If I added 5 to both sides and took the square root, I would get these roots there. So that's what I was kind of double checking in my, in my head. That's why I was second guessing myself. Uh, yeah, that is my standard form, and I use the box to get there. And when you get even more complicated examples, like let's say your roots are complex numbers, like x equals 2 plus 3i and x equals 2 minus 3i. Well, what are we going to do there? 
all doing the same thing, right? It's going to be x minus my root, 2 plus 3i. And I'm going to do x minus my root, 2 minus 3i. All right, now I was really careful about that. I, I subtracted this whole thing, so I had to put it in parentheses, and that really helps me out. Um, I really just subtract the root when I'm trying to find this. If, I'm, if I have the root and I want the factor, I just subtract it. Now, I did do another video where I showed an example where if the root's like one half, you wouldn't want to do that, but we don't have that situation here. We just have, uh, it's a complex number, but we don't have like a fraction or anything like that. Okay, so now I need to simplify this part because I'm subtracting two plus three i. So I really, this, this root is x minus two, and then I sub, I'm still subtracting three i. So x minus two, minus 3i. That's one root. And the other one is x minus 2 subtracting negative 3i is plus 3i. That used to trip me up. Every time I did it, I don't know why it would trip me up. So now, like I said, if you had learned FOIL, you wouldn't be able to really do this. First outside, inside, last. I mean, it's, it's nice when you have a binomial, but now we've got there's three different things I'm multiplying. It's, it's going to get really confusing when you're distributing all of those. I, I don't know. I don't have a good way of organizing my work, and that's where 99% of my mistakes happen. So what do we do? Well, we've got three things to multiply times three things, so I need a three-by-three three box. One, two, 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 two. Let's see here. One, make a three-by-three three box. Sure do love graph paper. Okay. So three by three box. All right, so now I'm gonna have, I'm gonna write this factor over here, x, negative two, negative three i. Then I'm gonna have x, negative two, positive three i. Now I will pause here and I will say, there is a trick for this, if you're multiplying these complex numbers. There is a trick, although I like this. I like the box because it's the same idea as what we've learned before. So it's extending into this. And really, if you just organize your work, it works out really nicely. Plus you get practice multiplying and adding, uh, combine, combining like terms. All right, so I'm gonna go through this. We are gonna multiply each thing. So x times x, that's x squared. x times negative two, negative two x. And I'm gonna work my way up. x times negative three i. All right, so I'm gonna put negative three i x. I guess you could write negative three x i. I'm gonna write it like this, okay? Negative two times x, negative two x. Negative two times negative two, positive four. Negative two times negative three i, that's going to be a negative times a negative, that's positive 6i. All right, so then I've got x times 3i, so that's going to be 3ix. Then I'm going to have 3i times negative 2, it's going to be negative 6i, because it's a negative times a positive, and then the 2 times 3 is 6, i is i. The last one, this last box, is negative 3i times 3i, and I'm actually going to write that for this right here. I'm going to write a little side note for us so that you can kind of see how, because that's another place where people get tripped up. So we're really doing negative 3i times 3i. I guess I could put those in parentheses. So what's happening here? So I know it's a negative number here times a positive number. So I know I'm gonna have a negative. And then three times three, well that's nine. And then i times i, well that's i squared, right? Okay, so that's negative nine times i squared. Well, i squared is just negative one, because i is the square root of negative one. So if I do the square root of negative one times the square root of negative one, that's just gonna give me negative one, right? So that's negative nine times negative one, right? So well, negative nine times negative one, that's just positive nine. So nine is what goes here, which might seem a little bit weird. Negative three i times positive three i, well, that's just nine. Right? The negative, I, the negative one comes from i squared. That cancels with the other negative, and then we just really just have the three times the three. That's how that one works. All right, so now, just like before, just like in my previous example, we add all the things up together. And then what's nice about this is things cancel out really nicely. So we've got, whoa, I almost knocked over my camera. y equals x squared, okay? That's this first one. Negative two x and negative two x, that combines to give me negative four x. Okay, then I'm gonna start working with this one. Negative three i x, and I'm starting to recognize negative three i x and positive three i x. Those are gonna cancel each other out. It's the exact opposite. Negative three i x plus three i x, those are gonna cancel. Same thing with the six i and the negative six i. 
It's really nice. It just cancels all out. And the last thing we're left with is 4 and 9. So we're going to add, what's that, 13? Perfect. So then that's my polynomial. And I started off with complex roots, right? So that means that the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, must have been negative. So b squared would have been negative 4, 16 minus 4 times a times c. Yeah, that would have been a negative number. So if you use the quadratic formula to solve this, you'll get these complex roots, all right? That's my polynomial. That's how you would take complex roots, write them in factored form, multiply them together using this lovely organization method, and then combine like terms. That's how you get it. Good luck.